All right, spawning in the bottom left side, we've got Erlu and his opponent up top, Marmu. All right, this has been a theme that we've seen <clears throat> from from certain high-level players for a while. You know, a lot of them just straight up would rather have the options for the Tier 2 than have a Tier 3 unit. You know what I mean? Like, like a lot of times they like that big cavalcade of Tier 2. Uh, instead of tier 3. I think Erlu, in general though, kind of historically, he's not the biggest tier 3 guy. Every now and then you'll see him tech in like a wolf. Uh, but but generally, Erlu likes to do things like abuse timings and build up to large tier 2 centric armies in, into the mid game. Really short map here. It's kind of hard to say who I like it better for. Like, at first glance, you know, it's like, all right, you can't really complain if you're Marmu. He's got these second base and a third base, like, right there. Meanwhile, Mar uh, Erlu does just have this natural, but this is so crazy. Like, do these bases even count? I'm curious who's going to be the the ballsy player here and grab that Grismilt, you know? Like, it's so risky. But at the same time, if you grab yours... You're kind of denying their your opponent of being able to grab theirs. I mean, look at this. These pigs. These pigs would be shooting each other. It's crazy. Now, keep in mind, though, I, I kind of feel like the rest of this map down here is a little bit easier for Erlu to get to. I'm really excited for this mill. There we go. Erlu takes it. Okay. And Marmu is going to say, that's fine, just grab that, that other base for now. I think that makes a lot of sense. But this is going to be so easy. This is, this is really exciting, honestly. I, I'm super hyped for this, because this is going to be very easy, both for Marmu to harass, and also be very easy as a staging point for Erlu to attack into the main. We're caught in a little bit of Tier 1 chicken here. And I think that makes a lot of sense on how short this map is. You know, neither player really wants to give the other one that little bit of a window where you've got like 180 bucks invested into a tier 2 that's not quite on the board. And your opponent just masks tier 1 and they attack you. But Marmu does now go for the skunks. After four tier 1 warrants and Erlu's going to crash in. Those toads... Delete two warrens immediately, but do not trade effectively with the ar army. And now Marmu's in a decent position to counterattack. But keep in mind, Erlu has a tier one centric army, so he's able to reproduce that very, very quickly. This mine also slowed things down for Marmu. So nice little early game win there for Erlu, but Marmu's not down and out. It does stink for him that he lost the tier one, but keep in mind, Erlu just ran his toads into that, you know, so the, the toads kind of traded with the warrens there. And the army value graph is, is a little bit weird because it, it calculates in the Warrens as well. But now Marmu's got into the Skunks, but I'm still a little bit worried about all these Toads. I, I would love to see like a single Lizard Warren out of Marmu to try to, to connect with the Toads, especially if Erlu goes up to 9. You know, 6 is scary, but 9 I think is that number where it starts to get deadly. Erlu going into Cam Snake here to try to deal with the uh, the skunk composition of the opponent. Meanwhile, Marmu going very, very hard into Tier 2. Going up to 6 Falcons. 5 farms, 6, 7 farms on the natural. Marmu playing so greedy. But the question is, will the greed pay off? I mean, Erlu is also going into a lot of Tier 2. So an attack from Erlu is not likely. And this is the decision making from Marmo. You know, he comes in, he scouts all these Warrens. And he says, okay, my opponent's not going to attack me very soon. I can get into my own additional tier 2. I can get into further saturation on my, my second base. And so far, this is looking good for, for Marmu. I think big masses of Falcons typically do quite nicely in these large tier 2 oriented compositions.
But Erlu's going up to nine toads. So when you have this many toads, I I I, I know this sounds crazy, but I almost want to see more squirrels out of Erlu now, right? Because I think the nine toads plus the cams are just gonna come in and doof down the entire ground force from Marmu. And he's gonna be left over with nothing but falcons. And squirrels actually do good against falcons. Like as long as you have enough. But at the same time, I don't think Erlu is fully aware of just how many falcons Marmu is getting into here. I mean he's got six or seven up here on the front line. Really good snake tags on these Falcons by Erlu, and these armies look like they're going to trade into each other, and, and Erlu actually comes out on top uh, because all the Chameleons stay alive there. Comes out on top pretty significantly. Like, the Toad Cam just deleted everything on the ground, leaving only the uh, the Falcons left over, but keep in mind, Erlu has a really significant amount of units invested that just cannot shoot up. Nice snake tags, getting a couple of those falcons. Like, Marmu has essentially no more ground force. Marmu realizes that they took a, a bad trade there, and is just kind of hoping that Erlu skimps out on the anti-air here. But smart move by Erlu to, to sell down on the toads. Pretty interesting to keep into the four cams. I think maybe the, the thought process there is that the four cams... Not only will they tank against the Falcons, which is important, but they also, combined with the three Toads, should be able to delete upon, give the give the blaps to the uh, Squirrel Force of Marmu pretty nicely. And Erlu is relying on Squirrels to be able to deal with these Falcons. I don't know, man. Again, Erlu's taking some good trades here, so he's got the, the advantage. But can Marmu do it? Marmu's got that 6 o'clock hidden base, by the way. And Erlu pushes in. These Chameleons getting a lot of work done. But can Marmu delete all the anti-air of his opponent? No, the, the Snake Micro is really on point here from Erlu. He does a great job spreading out all those stacks of poison onto all the various Falcons here. And I think just a ga uh, game-crippling damage. You know, so many farms go down. So many Warrens go down. Now keep in mind, Marmu does have this sneaky base down here. But is it going to be enough? He's only got a couple farms on it. Erlu still ahead on economy. That's two engagements where Erlu has come out on top. Hey, what's up, Proto Cam? Good to see you, man. Yeah, Proto was doing some uh, rank stream as well. Very cool, love to see that. I know Tosh typically does uh, ranked streams a lot. It's fun, I feel like we're getting up to like a lot of casters in the, sh in the scene now, which is super awesome. But I also love to see those guys like uh, like Chip, man. Chip probably had the most popular, uh, well, Clash of Comrades. I think Clash of Comrades probably beat it. Like the original alpha uh, tooth and tail casters. But Chip had like a really successful Twitch stream for a while while he was an active player. And all he would do is stream ranked matches, you know. People are really interested in that kind of content. You know, if you're, if you're not shy and, and you just want to have some fun, you're going to be playing some ranked anyways, don't mind hanging out on stream, man. It's, it's really important. I think one of the best things we can do for the community is just keep Twitch uptime, right? Like, the, uh, the more... Um, the more uptime we have on Twitch from from all the different channels, the better it is for for the stream or for the scene rather. All right, nice victory there from Erlu. But I do think we we need that in the scene right now. Um, I think we need more people just like streaming ranked matches, you know, for, from the uh, first person point of view. A lot of people find that really useful. I'm sorry, up here. Yeah, let's get it to match number two. And I think another thing that we need in the scene, like guys like Jet and Mishi had kind of done this a couple times. Yeah, I'll get to that in a second. In the bottom, we've got Marmu and up top, Erlu. 
where they take like really deep dives into into different concepts. You know, I would love to see that. I think that's better like YouTube content than it is Twitch, but it can work on Twitch as well. Kind of like uh, like a day nine daily style thing. You know, straight up. My my replay casting is a little bit different. That's more like. Uh, you know, just have fun with the community. Like, hey, submit your matches, and we'll hang out together, and we'll watch them and talk about them, have a good time. Let me give you a little bit of feedback and input, but... <clears throat> like, one thing we've talked about a lot lately, I feel like, is, is four skunk openers, right? So, it would be really cool to see, like, a content producer come out and just do a deep dive on that, right? Like, okay, what are the various ways to get into four skunk? Like, when should you get into four skunk? Uh, what are some answers to four skunk like actually if you if you do this opener and you hit four skunk right here then then you can bust it pretty easily stuff like that like deep dive breakdowns I would love to see some stuff like that in the scene all right so short rush distances as well from both players here map in the hyper late game does favor Marmu I mean, it seems like a significant amount of the grist mills that are on their side. I like Aralu. He's typically bold with these grist mill choices. You know, grabbing this grist mill now, like fighting for this position on this high ground right here, right now, is, is very smart. It is risky. But if you can establish yourself and you say, I, I don't think so, Marmee, like this is not your platform. We have to fight tooth and nail for it. That puts Erlu in a much better position to transition to a third base later on. Where, whereas if he had opened up with this base, like, yeah, it's it's safe. But it'll be really difficult to get this one later on. Marbu coming in for an engagement here. And this actually is working very nicely. Erlu spending that little bit of money... Into the grist mill, a little bit of money into these toads. I don't think the toads are the best at, at this phase of the game. You know, when you only got a few of them, you don't have large squirrel numbers. I don't think Aralu was considering he'd be attacked so aggressively at that point. You know, was hoping to, to kind of have the toads for a little bit later on. But, I mean, right here, it's like you want every squirrel you can get. And Marbu knows he's got a little bit of the momentum here. Nice kind of pull back, you know, waiting for reinforcements, letting those toads get uh, unfavorable connections there. And now he's on top of the Warrens, starting to get war number one, war number two falls, and Marmu putting a point on the board, tying things up one to one with just a mass squirrel spam. You know, love to see it. Arrow really wasn't even all that greedy. Like, all he did, I think, unless I, I missed something kind of talking too much. I mean, all he did was build a mill outside of Tier 1. But I think having this, the toads that early on was a little bit rough. Uh, but anyways, let's keep it going. Match number three. All right, spawning on the left-hand side, we've got Marmu. And his opponent to the right, Aralu. It's funny, the chat's kind of talking about how they see uh, top-level players using mines and stuff. Aralu was really, really no... I mean, most of y'all know this, but for any new viewers in chat, I see more follows coming in. Thanks for the follow, Asher, bro. I appreciate it. Um, so the mines recently got... I think they got a little bit of a stat nerf, but the big change was the reveal, right? And it's really interesting to see, you see this all the time in any competitive game, but when, when something gets like slightly nerfed, the the reaction from the community is is always immediately like, oh, it's garbage now. Like, you just can't do it. it, it it's out of the question. It's horrible. But as a little bit more time passes, you know, people are realizing, well, you know, mines are still... Pretty damn good, and, and even with the reveal, it, it's harder than you think to uh, to actually find them. <laughs> moles are garbage in the chat. Hey, we saw uh, we saw Eel win with the moles earlier. We saw uh, another successful mole push. 
Kipo and Chad being the voice voice of reason. But now, it, it, you know, it's it's too early to tell. I feel like. And, and one thing I, I used to say a lot, but I think I can repeat it now. It's been long enough. I, I feel like the strongest mine of the game is the first mine. You know, mines are really interesting, especially in a non-mine meta, because you you don't you're not gonna think your opponent has mines, right? Like Marmu is not looking for mines right now. Like there's a mine right there, but Marmu's not mine sweeping. He's not taking the time to do that sort of thing. Ooh, Aerolu being sneaky with the can. Metal Gear Solid. Solid Chameleon over here. Right, so I feel like some of the most impactful mines can be some of those first mines. When when you 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 don't even realize the opponent has mines, you, you go for a big move out, and then you slam right into them. Cam opening versus snake opening. I think that favors the snake, but uh, it also depends on the tags, depends on the engagement. And on this map, though, I really think it's going to be negligible. I think the map is just so gosh darn huge. We are going to see a nice big fat macro game here. And Aerolu with these Toads, that is what I'm the most excited about. Because Toads seem to be dominating right now, man. When you can get up to like 9 or 12 Toads. But the thing is, you can't rush into 9 or 10, 12 Toads. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta kind of organically get there over time. You, you don't want the vast majority of your army to be Toads. You need to have like 12, 15, 18 Squirrels and the 9 Toads. You know what I mean? I feel like anyways. But man, once you can get to that point, if they can get the right connections, they can really delete an army. Dude, some people are wizards about counting food, man. Chip, Chip and the Gentleman, I think, really stood out to me on that. Like, there are certain situations where... I mean, I'm pretty good at the early game, but I mean, Chip and the gentleman were like so tuned into it. You know, Chip would be able to come in and scout something like this, and, and know like a tier three warrant is hidden somewhere because food is missing. Like, I, I'm good for the first couple minutes, right? Like, I can count the food and be like, all right, you're you're missing something. You're up to no good. But when we get into mid games like this, like, how do you how can you tell that? It's really impressive. Erlu knows this cam harassment's coming in. Moving in for the snakes. Gonna get one. That's one dead cam. Trying to get the second one. That's two dead cams. Marmor realizes it. Trying to just hard commit to the pigs. I guess those trade out uh, evenly. I would actually consider that. It, it's interesting. It's a tempo victory for Erlu, but it's. I'm sorry for. Yeah, for Erlu. But it's an actual money victory or food victory for Marmu. Because even though it was 120 food for 120 food. I actually do count the rest of the food on that was left over on these farms as additional damage. And the tempo that Erlu got from killing those two tier two units is not gonna matter because this map is big and wonky enough to where no real attack is gonna come in anytime soon. Erlu did not use that as an opportunity to attack in or anything like that. And you start to float on purpose in mind games. Oh my god. That is hilarious. I can do some basic mind games, you know. I I, I, I got pretty good at one point of like... Like everybody knew I, I would go for like fast fox builds. So I would like show that and then the opponent leaves and I sell the fox worm, build a bunch of lizards, swing in, that kind of thing. All right, Erlu coming in for the big engagement, and all those Toads here to help out, and Erlu just dominates through here. Jeez, that was not even close. Well, maybe. Maybe these reinforcements can help clean things up. Erlu did a good job as well, getting all the snake stacks and everything, and Marmu looks like he's just getting ready to tap. Jeez Louise. Toads Magodes, man.
Toad Road Mode initiated. Game number four. Spawning on the bottom, we've got Marmu. And up on the top left on match point, Erlu. I'm always a little bit disappointed when games like that happen. We see that in, in all RTSs. You'll, you'll see that in Brood War and StarCraft 2 and that sort of thing as well. But sometimes we build up, we spend all game long building up to these big death, death ball armies. And one person just dominates in, in, the, in the engagement. And they just swing in and, and, and finish the game. That's always cool, you know, everybody likes big explosions, but... I, I love the nuance that happens when, like, those big death ball armies in the big game end up trading. And then the players have a lot of important decisions, like, what do I keep? What do I sell? What do I think my opponent's gonna keep? But we did not see that that, that time around. Erlu got the, uh, toe connections he was looking for. Dominated through that, that, uh fight and this time around Marmu's got the toads as well yeah toads definitely looking strong but again I think we need a little bit more time to see how things play out see if people can come up with good answers for the toads But it's rough, they're just so fast. Like, what can you... The only thing I can think of, and I, I sound like a broken record because I've said it a few times already, is, you know, you've got, like, Squirrel Lizard or something, and you try to just build a, a couple lizards and a lot of squirrels and, and have the lizards tank the, the toad shots, right? But that's not theory. I mean, that literally used to be the meta back in the day. Like... When, when we had strong toads in previous patches. Like, that's literally what people did against them. Sometimes it can be kind of hard, <clears throat> hard though, in, in situations like that. Like, imagine Erlu's army is, like, threatening. Well, I guess it would be down here. Like, threatening, you know, the big toad and, and friend's army. But Erlu's just holding his toads back. Holding the toads back, right? And poking in, poking in. And he's going to wait until you hard engage. And then he's going to release the toads. So, there's a lot of uh, micro that can get involved with that. I think at, uh, I think with like no micro at all, toads are very dominant, right? Like we might just see toads end up like smashing the beginner's division or something like that. We'll see, I'm just, I'm just talking, I could be right or wrong. Yeah, owls. Obviously, owls are really good against toads. All right. And as you can see there, this is what I was talking about. That was a perfect example. Marmu's three toads traded for Erlu six. And now look at this. All of a sudden, Marmu has got the uh, the unit advantage. Just cleans up those mines and goes home. But that, that was like a perfect example of how to deal with toads. And those didn't have to be toads that Marmu used there. Those could have been lizards. Those could have been moles. That's exactly the thing you're trying to do. And it's really kind of cool in these situations where it's like, the person with three toads kind of might have a little bit of an edge against the person with more, if they can get the right connections. That time around, the, the trade was better for Erlu because Marmu's toads were not all in the right spot. A couple of them got blown up before Erlu's toads moved in. But this is exciting to me. Like I, I, I feel like, you know, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to with the with the new Toad meta. But I feel like Toads really open up a lot of micro and outplay potential in in tier one engagements. Erlu pushing forward. Marmu's Toads are still here. And another thing too is you can target fire down Toads, right? It is. I mean, yeah, you can't really when there's too many of them. But we used to see that a lot back in the day in the previous Toad metas too, where guys would like desperately target down the Toads. Like look at this, like this running back and, and things like that. I mean, this is like some actual micro that we see going on here. And, and that is so much fun to me. And 
And I'm not saying there isn't micro in other places of the game, there there certainly is. But I, I just love how much micro gets introduced into into tier one armies with these toads. Alright, Marmu. That time around, Erlu did have a couple toads left over, but I think Marmu still had a decent trade there. Gonna back up, wait for some reinforcements, kinda re-rally. Ooh, that toad gets some decent connections there for Erlu, but that one should get shot down. No, it actually does manage to connect. I think it if Marmu didn't pull back there, he would have actually shot down that Toad before it, it got too close. And Marmu finally pushes through. That was so much fun, man. Like that, that was really awesome. And you can see in these engagements, you know, most of the fights, Marmu was winning. All right, match number five. Every series tonight going to five games. So let's see it. This is it. Spot on the bottom, we've got Erlu. His opponent up top, Marmu. This one is for all the marbles. Both players with the exact same compositions here. Literally every same unit. And this map is looking better for Aralu. Nice four bases here. Maybe Marmu, you know, Marmu's got this nice natural. That's such a good natural. Like, that natural is just impossible to attack. I mean, Erlu's kind of got a pocket that, that's really similar, you know? that That's basically impossible to attack as well. But Erlu's got other options. You can maybe try to take this one, again, just to get that risky base out of the way early on. And... You know, this map is a little more even than it looks. These two bases over to the side are awkward, but I would kind of consider them for Marmu. And this middle mill just doesn't exist. Like, no player is going to get that. It, well, let me rephrase that. If somebody gets this mill and is, like, farming off it, that that's game. That's game over. They've got so much map control. So this might end up being four base versus four base if it goes that long. I do favor the map for Erlu, but not by a ton. I, I think this is still playable for Marmu. I don't think it's unreasonable that Marmu could get over here to get that done later on. It's still a pain though, because even if Marmu does, Erlu could do things like abuse this uh, wall with falcons, you know, that sort of thing. So like little reasons like that, it's definitely better for Erlu, but... It's a playable map for Marmu. You know, a lot of times we don't see games go past two bases anyways. And with these kind of players that are really in each other's face, you know, we don't see any owls here. We're, we're not looking for these, these big late game hyper compositions. You know, both these players playing bruiser decks here. They're both trying to shoulder check their opponent. They're like, I dare you. I dare you to get a tier 3 against me. Pretty mirror stuff so far. Erlu getting into the cams a little bit earlier. Ooh, I think Marmu sold a pig. Maybe he didn't. Get into some snakes. Damn, the exact same deck from both sides. No skunks either. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe that's it. Like, maybe the toads are just too good against skunks. You know, you got that four skunk composition that I've, I've been hammering about. And maybe the answer to that is just nine toads. And you just run the toads into the skunks, and there you go. It's not rocket appliances, Deltheus. Yeah, and another thing is toads move the same in water, which can make for some interesting engagements because some uh, some units cannot. 
So we can do flank attacks in Tooth and Tail. Uh, since you can't, it is difficult for sure, but <clears throat> since you can uh, rally your individual units separately, uh, you, you see this pretty often, in fact. Like, Erlu might take his chameleons and, and run them over to the side, you know, and then try to come in here and get some pigs and, and that sort of thing. People do that a lot with their lizards. Tiki Gray has uh, lately also been showing off that you can do that sort of thing with snakes. But typically, uh, most flanks are with like lizards or chameleons or fox or, or that sort of thing. Yeah, commanders are just flavor. Um, both sides start off the exact same, and both sides have access to the same uh, unit selection. Uh, we call it building a deck. Got to pick six units out of 20 choices. You can do it any way you want. All right, Erlu's getting into position. He's got some mines getting set up for the retreat if necessary. Going to move in here, looking for these toe connections, and going to slam those toes on top of Marmu's entire army. Oh, my goodness. Whew. Erlu just was not... He didn't have any counter micro there from the look of it. Like, I'm actually kind of curious... To see what happened in that engagement. Like, what did Marmu's Toads do there? Because Marmu's army was kind of like standing still. I mean, those toe connections were like cash money, dude. Like, on top of the entire army, on top of the Warrens. That was a deletion. Now, the one thing that Marmu does have going for him is the. Uh, the economy wasn't affected. He did lose a lot of warrens there. I think it might also have to do with how many chameleons are here. Like, chameleons like to group up. And, and I feel like when you get into numbers like this, like, the toads should, should do pretty good against the cams. But Marmu's not out yet. Maybe if Marmu can... Take a good value engagement. He might be able to do this. He really cannot let those toads blow up on his chameleons. That's the big thing. He needs to have his toads hit the enemy's toads, but the toads get really good connections here for Erlu again. On top of all the cams, all of Erlu's cams are left over. He even re them all at very, very low HP, and that's going to be it. Marmu taps out.